the letter to the Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. We will be reading from verse 1 to 3 and then skip over the rest and start again from 29 and all the way to 40. And we will continue to read the first three verses of chapter 12. The letter to the Hebrews, 11, verse 1 to 3. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the world, the world were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. Verse 29. Sorry, verse, verse 29 of 11. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drunk. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say, for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the raging fire escaped the age of the sword. Wall strength out of weakness became mighty in war, took foreign armies to fight flight. Women received their death by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flocking and even chains and imprisonment. They were sold to death, they were sold in two, they were killed by the sword, they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in desert and mountains, in caves and holes in the ground. And all these, though they were commanded for their faith, did not receive what was promised. Since God had provided something better for them, they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, chapter 12, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a crowd of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that's claimed so closely, and let us run with perseverance, the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding his shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. By faith, Abel offered to God. By faith, Enoch was taken. By faith, Noah built the ark. By faith, Abraham set out. By faith, Moses left Egypt. By faith, the people of Israel passed through the Red Sea. By faith. Brothers and sisters, even a service reading of Hebrews 11, 1 to 12, 3. Well, allow us to suspect that this is perhaps the greatest passage about faith in the whole Bible. I can assure you that this is the greatest. 
passage about faith. In this passage, the author discloses uh, maybe two or three important teachings about faith that I think you and I ought to know. And so this morning, I'm going to share with you what they are. Three things about faith. First, faith is the ability to see. Faith is the ability to see. In other words, faith is a set of eyes through which we see the world. Faith is a set of glasses through which we perceive the reality around us. A kid who is calling from play outside is asked by his mother to wash his hands before coming to the dinner table. You know, nowadays during COVID, not just kid, everybody should do the same. But this kid, when he was still playing outside, was called by his mother to come home for dinner. But first of all, he must wash his hands. Disgusted by the whole thing, no, no, no boys or girls would like it. Disgusted by whole, the whole thing, the kid, you know, murmur, talking to himself. Germs and Jesus, germs and Jesus. That is all I hear around this house. And yet, I have never seen any one of them. Germs, Jesus. Moms always, you know, talks about germs and Jesus. But I have never seen either one. Indeed, for some of us, faith is as invisible as germs. Occasionally, we even talk about, you know, blind faith, as if faith is blind, not seeing anything. But the face I have in mind for you this morning is not blind. I'm not asking you to do something that is against your good judgment or against your good reason. The face I have in mind for you is defined by the author of the letter to the Hebrews in the following way. Faith is the assurance of things hopeful, the conviction of things not seen. Some other translations will give you faith is the reality of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. Whichever translation, faith is the ability to see what is not seen. That is basically the definition of faith. The ability to see what your physical eyes cannot see. Well, many people who have a not mindset, you know, show me and I will believe. This is the, you know, show me state, you know, show me mindset. They will say, unless you show me, otherwise I will not believe. I can only believe what my eyes have seen. The faithful people will counter. Believe and God will show you. It is not show me and I will believe. It is the other way around. Believe and God will show you. Well, some of us will see things as they are and ask why. The faithful will dream of things that never were and ask why not. Faith is not blind. As a matter of fact, faith is the opposite. It is not blind, it is seeing fully. Second thing about faith, faith is the courage to act upon what we see. You know, first thing is, faith is the ability to see, but that is not enough. Faith is also the courage to act upon 
what we see. There is a story about a tightrope walker, you know, those who can balance so well and walk on a tightrope. A tightrope walker who stretched a cable across the Niagara Falls all the way from the American side to the Canadian side. You know, it's very wide. To the applause of the crowd, the acrobat, this type of walker, walked the tight road above the rushing cascading waters that thunder underneath, you know, Niagara Falls, thunder. And secondly, after the travel once, he walked back, but this time he blindfolded himself and doing the feat. For his grand finale, he took a wheelbarrow, you know, so twist a wheelbarrow, and asked the crowd, Do you think I can push this wheelbarrow across the Niagara Falls? Of course you can, came the thunderous response. And after this, this time Walker, uh, Walker said, Well, if you have faith in me, which one of you will volunteer to ride in the wheelbarrow with me? As you can imagine, the crowd who seemed to have faith in him were silenced totally by this invitation. Brothers and sisters, not only should faith have the ability to see, he also should have the courage to act upon what you see. Without acting upon what you can see, your faith is incomplete. That is why the author of Hebrews emphasizes, by faith ever over, Enoch walked, Noah built an ark, and Abraham set out. You know, over, walked, built, set up. These are all words acting upon something that they see. Faith is the action we take. Faith is the move we make. And faith is the courage to act upon what we see. Thirdly, finally, Faith is the determination to endure what may become of you. Faith is the determination to endure whatever will come your way. Verse 39 says, Yet all these, all these faithful examples, those great giants of faith, all these people, though they were commanded by their faith, they were commended for their faith. They were acknowledged by God as the giants of faith, commended for their faith. They did not receive what was promised. Verse 39 says that. You see, when all these faithful people died, they did not receive what was promised, but were commended for their faith. This means that even though they did not get everything that was promised, they did faithfully until their death. You know, I think this is one of the greatest compliments in the whole Bible. Greatest compliment that can be granted to a person in the whole Bible. Honestly, I hope I can receive the same kind of compliment when I die. I wish I could receive that. Even William Child did not receive everything promised to him. He is faithful until his death. The great American theologian of 20th century, I have referred to him several times because I admire him greatly. His name was Rival Neal. You know, today in New York, center of New York, there is a street called Rival Nebula Street. It's a pastor. 
This is what he said. Nothing that is worth doing can be achieved in our lifetime. Therefore, we must be saved by hope. Nothing which is true or beautiful or good makes complete sense in any immediate context of history. Therefore, we must be saved by faith. Nothing we do, however virtuous, can be accomplished alone. Therefore, we must be saved by love. We know in the first Corinthians, Paul is talking about faith, hope, and love. This is rival Nebu's version of faith, hope, and love. Nothing that is worth doing can be achieved in our lifetime. So we need hope. Nothing which is true, beautiful, good makes complete sense in any immediate context of history. Therefore, we need faith. And nothing we do, however good, however virtuous, can be accomplished by you alone. You need companions. Therefore, we need love. You know, I wish I could be that smart. Everything I said, you know, can be made into a place. We can distill two bits of wisdom from this saying. First, things worthwhile, things true, beautiful, good, often take longer than our lifetime to accomplish. We must acknowledge that. So we need the virtue of baseball endurance. Endurance, because it may not be accomplished in your lifetime. And secondly, when in doubt, to borrow the aid advertisement commercial of I believe it is Nike. When in doubt, just do it. You know, when I decided to become a pastor 30 some years ago, I said this to God. I still remember. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, if there is any good I can do, if there is any service I can render, if there is any help I can give, oh God, let me neither deter it or neglect it. Let me just do it. I said this 30 some years ago when I decided to be a pastor. Let me just do it. I, do, I don't really care if I can accomplish a lot or if I can see the happy result. Let me just do it. I may be the starter. Someone will follow up. Brothers and sisters, the people mentioned by the author of Hebrews, they all have determined to be faithful whatever it takes. Faith is a determination to endure. That is the third teaching about faith. So in summary, faith is the ability to see, the courage to act upon what we see, and the determination to endure whatever may become of us, just do it. But that kind of faith, I urge you to go to work each day, to come to church each week, to drive your car, to visit your doctor, to take care of your family, and to invest in your future. You need that faith, that kind of faith, to do everything that is falling in your head. Amen. I will now turn to the Taiwanese congregation.